Hey guys, how's it going? This is Matt Mater, and welcome back after a short break to another creepypasta reading. I'm still a little clogged up from the sickness, so I hope that's not too much of an issue for you guys. I just wanted to put out another video, so. Um, this story is a rather creepy read, and it draws most of its, well, spooks from the fact that it's actually based off the author's now-deceased grandfather's testimonies on his deathbed. It's titled, The Devil's Perfume. Now as always, turn out the lights, get comfortable, and let the story begin. Growing up in the South, in a pretty religious family, folklore is always around. Being Mexican to boot, these stories were always a constant reminder to be a good child. My grandfather believed in this wholeheartedly. He loved telling us that if we didn't behave, El Cucoy was coming to get us. El Cucoy was the boogeyman, just like La Lorana was a woman who wept to lure children to the river to drown them as she had done to her own children. How were these age-appropriate stories? My grandfather insisted that he saw La Lechusa, a witch turned into a large white owl roaming in the backyard once. I started to keep track of when he mentioned one of these names. If my cousins and I were too loud, El Cucoy was coming. If we ran around outside, La Lechusa would take us away. In my grandfather's last few years of life, he never spoke of any of these ghastly creatures anymore. Albeit, we were older and less noisy around him. We would laugh as we'd recall him yelling at us, all the while my grandfather remained silent. Before his health started to decline, he would speak in hushed whispers about things, things that scared him. What I remember most during his last year was that he was always afraid of the dark. He spent his nights pacing the house. He would call relatives at 3 and 4 a.m. to see what they were doing. Like clockwork, he called my parents' house. 3 a.m. phone call, 4 a.m. phone call. One morning in the summer, he didn't call. He didn't call because he said he smelled something. The story he told my grandma is one that is hard to believe. He was walking about the house, making his rounds. A slight shuffle in his house slippers over the tiled floor. Sst, 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 sst. He never really picked up his feet. Sst, 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 sst. He was moving from the kitchen dining area to the front living room. Sometimes when the street light is on, you can see the street from one side of his yard to the other. Cars lining the streets in front of houses where people were sleeping. All but one person. Or so he thought. He heard something he wasn't sure of. Was it talking or mumbling? Maybe it was humming. No one should be awake at this hour. My grandfather shuffled to the front door. That's when he saw her, a woman dressed in dark clothing, walking down the middle of the street. Ever curious, my grandfather opened the door. He stood behind the screen door in silence as the wind picked up and he smelled it. In an instant, he smelled something foul, a wall of sulfur and just like that it was gone, leaving only a lingering smell of roses. 
He didn't say anything. Didn't move. Then she turned to him. An old woman, small in stature, with no real facial features he could recall. A darkness covering her face, although she was within the beam of the streetlight. She was wearing a black veil, lacy, framing her oval-shaped face. She looked right at him as she tried to get near, her feet shuffling toward the edge of his driveway. Sst, 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 sst. Immobile with fear, my grandfather stood at the door, the smell of roses growing stronger as she approached. Her face beginning to compose features, eyes dark and set deep under her brow, small mute mouth, sunken cheeks that seemed to tug her face even more into an oval shape, too elongated to be real. As she approached the driveway, she stopped. The humming was back. Was she talking? Was she singing to him? My grandfather watched as she tried to step onto his property. She struggled. Something was preventing her from walking up the driveway. Seemingly forced to remain on the street, she stopped humming. Her face was that black hole. The eyes. Were they glowing? Was the jaw that far stretched down into a snarl howl shape? The sulfur smell was back. She, this creature, was unable to cross over onto my grandfather's property. And with a screech, she moved back into the middle of the street. Sst. 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 This creature began its humming down the street, seeming to vanish in the darkness that went beyond where the light street could reach. This went on, every early morning for several weeks. My grandfather never told a soul for the first few nights. Who would believe him that he saw the devil in the street at 3am? The sulfur rose smell lingering in his nostrils so much that he began to overly use his nasal spray. He used these menthol inhalers, one every month. After his visitor's appearance, he was using one a week, until he was placed onto ICU on his deathbed. That holiday season, my aunt saw a woman walking the streets at night when she went to the kitchen for water. She heard a song that she didn't understand, with the smell of roses. When she approached the door, the woman stood at the driveway, and sulfur stained the air. My aunt was too afraid to get any closer to the door, and went back to her bedroom. February of 2009 My grandfather laid with monitors hooked up to him delirious from pain medications, and his body deteriorating. He began to say he could smell the devil's perfume. He was adamant of that rosy sulfur smell in the air, that she went roaming the streets, singing to people to take, sings to them to walk out of their homes. He said the creature would come out of the walls at the foot of his bed in ICU to visit, This was the first time my aunt heard of someone else speaking of the woman walking the streets, smelling the roses and sulfur. This was the first time something this far-fetched was ever uttered aloud within the family. Everything was always some folklore story, but this, this happened to two different family members. March of 2009, my grandfather passed away. 
I had to fly in, thinking I wasn't able to say goodbye. But he held on for me. When I heard the stories of this devil in disguise, I shrugged it off with a smirk. Oh, right. Like that really happened. Pfft. No. It's for real. I saw it. My aunt loved to exaggerate, but the look in her eyes made me skeptical. That night, I dreamt of the story, as if I was there. I could smell the roses, the sulfur. I saw this small, frail woman walking the street under the streetlight. When she turned to me in my dream, her face was a black void. At my grandfather's funeral, the priest spoke of life and how in death we're reunited with our loved ones and are at peace. I couldn't shake that feeling of my dream. At the cemetery, by a crooked mesquite tree, off in the distance, there was a woman, small in stature, skinny. Where were her feet? Was she looking at me? How? I couldn't see her face. It was broad daylight, and I couldn't see her face. I smelled roses. The wind whipped up, and it was warm, and briefly, I smelled it. I smelled the sulfur. There was nothing around but empty fields. Where was this sulfur smell coming from? I looked around, and then back at the tree. But she was gone, as was the smell. Every now and then I hear a sound, like shuffling feet. Sst, 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 sst. And I smell roses. If I close my eyes, I can see that small figure in black. Sst. 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 I open my eyes before she looks at me. Sst. 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 Is that? The devil's perfume I smell. <laughs>